everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends 6 inch tombstone figure from Hasbro. Now, this figure comes packaged in the same style packaging we see with all the Marvel Legends. You've got the black box with the red highlights on this one. You've got the Legend Series logo up at the top. The figure is clearly displayed. Down below, you've got a Spider Man logo. And then this figure is listed as one of the sinister villains because it shares the same packaging with the Beetle figure that also ships in this wave. So on one side of the packaging, you have some artwork for Tombstone. The other side, you've got artwork for Beetle. Then on the back of the packaging, you have a look at both figures, a brief bio in multiple languages, and then down below, a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete the Vulture Build-A-Wing. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, let me just say a big thanks to the folks at Hasbro for sending me this figure so I could review it for you guys. Now, the only accessory that this figure comes with is a piece of the Vulture Build-A-Wing. It's one of the propeller pieces or jet turbine pieces. And I'll be taking a look at the Vulture Wing in its own review once I've looked at all the figures in this wave. So be sure to check back for that. Okay, so for the figure itself, this figure uses some parts from the Hyperion mold, primarily with the arms and the legs. The torso section is actually different, though. It's not the same torso section as the Hyperion figure, but you can see they're pretty close to the same height. Now, if you're not familiar with the Tombstone character, he's been around for a while. He started out in the Spider-Man comics. He was actually an associate. I uh, went to high school with Robbie Robinson. And basically in high school, Robbie did a, an article on him about him extorting money from other students at the school. And later on, when Robbie was a reporter, he witnessed uh, Lincoln murder somebody. Basically, Lincoln, who was an albino, went out and sharpened his teeth. So he had this really intimidating look and, and became a, a mob enforcer, essentially. And so Robbie witnessed this murder and kept it a secret because he didn't want to get killed by, by Lonnie. And so years later, he ends up testifying. Robbie testifies against Tombstone and sends him to jail. Robbie ends up going to jail as well for withholding evidence. And eventually, you know, Tombstone gets out and Spider-Man and, and Robbie confront him at, at an Oscorp plant where Tombstone or Lonnie gets dosed with chemicals. And that's where he gets his superpowers from. And he's got like super strength and resistant skin. Kind of like Luke Cage, kind of on par with that. And he's worked for people like the Kingpin. He was like the right-hand man for the Kingpin for a while, if I recall correctly. He also worked for people like Hammerhead. So he's kind of had a, a storied past. And the figure itself, it features him in this kind of, uh, I would almost call super villain type costume. I prefer, a lot of times you see him just wearing like a business suit or a gangster suit. And that's kind of the look I would have preferred for him in figure form. But I think overall they've done a pretty good job with this. Now, like I said, this incorporates a lot of parts from the Hyperion mold. But you do get the new torso section with this large collar. And the collar is done with a pretty hard plastic. And I like the paint applications overall, especially with the head sculpt. So you've got some nice shading effect on this albino type skin. So you've got some lighter and darker colors, which I think work well. And you've even kind of sharpened his teeth a little bit, which, you know, was kind of his signature thing even before he had the superpowers. And then he's got this buzz cut, which looks pretty good. And the hair is a, a lighter, whiter color than the skin. So I think that looks good. And then he's got kind of reddish eyes and the white eyebrows so overall i think they've done a really good job with that and then even like on the uh, skin here on his chest that looks pretty good and you've again got some more wash effect and they even managed to get this hinge joint on his neck the same color as the rest of the skin so i like that a lot of times with those hinge joints they end up not being quite the same color so they did a good job with that then the rest of the costume is just a standard black so not a lot of paint detail with that you do have the belt piece which has got these little studs which are done with a almost a metal gray look to it. So I like that. And then he's got these collar or these uh, wrist pieces, which are separate. And these are done with just black. You've got a little, looks like maybe a little bit of a grayish color on the buckles. And these are actually separate pieces and they kind of move on the figure. And then you have the same thing down here on his ankles. So those are actually separate pieces. So overall, I think they've done a pretty good job with the figure, though again, like I said, I would have actually preferred them do Tombstone with a suit as opposed to this uh, kind of supervillain looking costume. 
So this figure stands about six and three quarter inches, maybe a little over six and three quarter inches tall. Here's a comparison of Tombstone with one of Hasbro's more modern Spider-Man figures. This is the Spider-Man figure from the Raft box set. And then finally, here's a comparison with some other crime bosses. So this is the Toy Biz Kingpin figure. And I really hope that Hasbro makes us an updated Kingpin figure soon. And then we've got the Hammerhead, which is actually the Chameleon figure with the Hammerhead head on it. And then my makeshift Silvermane, which is that Silvermane head that came with the Speed Demon on this Ultron figure body. And if you're wondering if you could take that tombstone head and stick it on the chameleon body, technically you can, but the tombstone head's really too big for it to look good. So for articulation, you can turn the head to the left and to the right. It's on a ball hinge joint, so he can look down pretty good, and he can look back about that much. You can get the arms out good, standard ball hinge joint there at the shoulder, and he's got good rotation there at the shoulder. He's got a bicep swivel. He's got a double hinged elbow, so he can bend his elbow about that much. He's got rotation at the wrist and hinges on the hand, so good up and down movement. He's got an ab crunch joint, so he can crunch down pretty good, and he can look back pretty good as well. Also has the waist swivel. Legs are attached with ball joints, so he can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg up high. Can do his leg back about that much. He's got a thigh swivel, has a double hinged knee, so good bending at the knee, has a boot cuff swivel, hinges on the feet, so good up and down movement, does have ankle pivot, and two peg holds on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I think this is a pretty solid figure. It's got decent paint applications, good articulation, and a nice size to it. My only minor complaint with it is I would have rather seen the character in a suit as opposed to the supervillain type outfit, but I think if you're a fan of the character, this is one you'll definitely want to add to your collection. Now this figure along with the rest of the wave has started to hit shelves. You can also pre-order it at places like Big Bad Toy Store. We'll have a full image gallery up at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.